bit uh, how blind people uh, actually play games. Um, so, what's the problem of blind people? Well, they don't see. So, um, pure graphics things are uh, a problem and typically don't work. Uh, so, we uh, first go a little bit back in history uh, to the good old days, in my opinion, when text mode games were still alive and uh, even sighted people were playing them. Uh, and later on, I'll be going uh, a little bit into audio games, which are games more or less uh, specially written for blind people, which can be a good thing, uh, but uh, I think we could even do better. So, um, text mode games. Um, there is actually a lot of this stuff uh, around, and uh, yeah, there is there are um, these turn-based uh, role-playing games. Um, they are also called roguelike because. Uh, Rogue was like the first game which uh, looked like this. Um, then there are text mode, uh, then there are text adventures or interactive fiction, um, which is basically more or less an interactive book, so you can interact with uh, the game by entering commands. Uh, then there are <coughs> uh, multi-user dungeons, which maybe someone of you know, which is more or less the same thing as interactive fiction, but online and in multi-user mode. And uh, then we can maybe even play some board or card games in text mode. Um, so, um, these, these uh, roguelike games are characterized by randomization to make gameplay a little more fun so that it's not even uh, always the same if you start it again. And they are turn-based, which is uh, quite important for blind people so that they can take the time they need uh, to to uh, actually look at what's on the screen. Um, many of the old ver versions actually used ST graphics, which uh, is actually uh, readable with a braille display for some people. So um, that's something that I really like because uh, I can use it. Uh, and this is an, as an example for this, maybe uh, someone of you maybe still knows NetHack. I remember this was really the first game that I played on Linux when I came to Linux and I was I really liked it. Um, so, just to get an impression, I mean, so we generate a character. And now we have this uh, ASTI based map where uh, normal ASTI characters are used to represent items. Um, I can w navigate with my braille display around and like see that this room has uh, at least one exit to the left. So I could try to like go there. Uh, yeah. So there's actually some monster around which I need to fight right now. But I guess we don't have really the time to uh, play this a lot. But the point is, it's actually playable. Uh, I can, for instance, see that here on the right side would be a gold that I guess I need to pick up. And yeah. Uh, so this actually works, even if it is, uh, uh, it is two dimensional and uh, there's a map and everything. Uh, but I actually uh, like to play it. Um, it takes a little bit of time, of course. so. Uh, you have to take your time to uh, really look around and yeah, but it works. And uh, what's very uh, what's nice about this is, of course, it's a game actually not written for blind people. So uh, I can like play the same game as sighted people play, which is a nice thing. Then there is uh, interactive fiction. Uh, which is a genre where really a lot of games have been written. Um, these games are mostly based on uh, interpreters, so it's kind of like a bytecode, which is very nice because it's platform independent as well. Um, there are some uh, formats for this. Uh, the best known is probably Infocom or Setcode. Uh, on Devon, at least, there are like four interpreters for this in text mode that I know of. So uh, there's really plenty to choose from. 
There is also a more modern stuff like the text adventure development system, which is uh, like free software, so you can also program your own text adventure games. And there were uh, actually a lot more systems that I'm not going to name because uh, I don't know them all and uh, there's no point. Um, many games uh, can still be downloaded from www.ifarchive.org, it stands for Interactive Fiction Archive. Uh, which is really very, very uh, I mean, they have thousand games, it's really, really a nice thing. And just to, to show something uh, which I think is really neat is uh, Douglas Adams actually wrote uh, an interactive fiction game together with Infocom uh, for Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, which you can download from the net as well, it's like 130 Ks and just uh, launch with one of these Infocom interpreters and you are right in the middle of the game. So you wake up, the room is spinning very, very gently around your head. Or at least it would be if you could see. Yeah? So the point is, this, this is the start of the game uh, and the, it's the same as the start of the book. Uh, it's pitch black, so I'll just get out of bed first. <laughs> um, the point is, if you know the book, I mean, uh, Arthur Dent, which you are playing here, uh, is kind of drunk from the day before, <laughs> so he doesn't really feel well. Um, and there's still no light, so let's turn on the light with a command. And suddenly we see the room with all the things around it. Uh, yeah, so just to show you a little bit how to so uh, I'm, I've just took the gown which is lying around and uh, now I'm going to look in the pocket of the gown which doesn't work because I just have it in hand so I have to put it on. So now I'm wearing it and uh, now I can look in the pocket and ha! I am looking for a pill because I'm so dizzy. So yeah, I mean that's just an example and uh, the game starts from here so uh, it's it's really it's really uh, Douglas Adams had a uh, real fun designing this game as far as I can see because it's pretty clear. I mean it's very hard to play. Uh, uh, so yeah, but it's just an example. So let's move on. Of course there. Are Later there came, uh, with the advent of the internet, uh, there came these multi-user dungeons, which are basically uh, more or less interactive fiction, uh, with this, uh, like, role-playing, but it's also a mixture with online chat. So, uh, I mean, in the past, you basically just executed Telnet to some server and some port and uh, started your character there, defined the name, uh, and basically you started in some room, more or less like interactive fiction, but the difference is really that, uh, uh, that there can be more player <coughs> playing together at this server. And one really interesting thing about this is that blind people and sighted people can actually play together without noticing, because, I mean, uh, yeah, why should you notice that you are playing against a blind guy? If he's using text, he has no problem. Uh, yeah, of course, and then, there are a lot more things you can actually do in text mode, like uh, try to play board, board games or uh, even card games. Um, just for, for a small example, um, I actually um, talked a little bit with uh, a person working on an Emacs chess mode. Uh, and since I'm using Emacs, uh, I'll just show it, which is like this board representation, which is uh, very, very small and compact. But this way, I can actually read it with my Braille display. Uh, and like make moves, like E4, 
whatever, and uh, then wait for the reply. Uh, actually, the configuration of this uh, engine is not really complete, so it will think here a lot. So we, I'm not going to show you how to play chess, but the point is it, it really works. Um, some, some people also do this not directly on the computer, but they use a, a, a normal chessboard. Uh, I mean, like a tactile chessboard, and they just execute the moves themselves, uh, which is also fine, but it takes a little more time. Um, well, then, just as an example, I mean, uh, When I, when I got first interested in poker, I played like poker with my friends and then I went home and was quite alone at home and I thought like, hmm, I'd like to play poker as well against my computer. Uh, looking around, the problem was that all the poker uh, games basically under Linux were highly graphical, so you required this graphical interface to actually play a game which, uh, in my opinion, doesn't really require that. Um, so what I did is like I looked at the library behind it and found out that it could uh, be reused. So I wrote my own uh, little text mode poker game, um, which just works like interactive fiction. So with every line that comes, uh, it describes what, what is happening next. Uh, so there are some players, uh, it lists my, my, the cards that I have in hand and gives me the, op uh, the possibilities I have, like core, race, or fold. I mean, it's always the same. So it's a command line oriented thing. I say like core and then the next thing happens and uh, the cards are put on the board and things like that. So um, yeah, that's how I play poker against the computer. Well, um, even things like Tetris can be played. Uh, in, in text mode. Uh, all we need to do is, is cheat a little bit. I mean, it's, it's too fast usually, so what I do is like I use the pause key uh, to review the screen to look uh, what, what, what block I have here, uh, how I should turn it, and where it possibly fits. And then I just uh, do the action, and uh, when the next block com comes, I hit the pause key again. Which is, um, for me, actually doable. I mean, as a Braille display user, it's, you can do this if you're uh, experienced enough. There is even uh, audio, I like a speech version of Tetris, which was written by T.V. Raymond, the uh, author of Emacs Speak. Uh, I'm not going to de demonstrate this because, uh, yeah, I, I'm not really a speech user and I'm not into this, but just as, as a pointer. Uh, people are actually doing things to 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 make games playable for themselves because yeah they are usually unknown. So um, now these were the text mode uh, based games and I guess the next th uh, step is actually audio games. Um, there is a really comprehensive list of these on the internet. It's called audiogames.net. Uh, unfortunately, most of these. Uh, 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 more or less non-free software. So I'm not really going to, I'm not trying to promote non-free software. All I'm trying to do is uh, to show you what's currently around and maybe inspire someone to actually write a clone of these uh, things in, 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 as a free software version. Uh, many of them are written especially for blind people, which can be a good thing, but it's also kind of bad thing because uh, we are no longer possible to play together with other sighted people. Really nice would be if, if some mainstream games had actually some audio mode or something that you could like, if you start a game, you, I mean, why not choose a character? Why not? I'm a blind samurai. Why not? I mean, could, could really make fun, sense. So all the game would need to do is, is present uh, the information in a kind of a other way. Uh, so via sound or whatever. Um, so. This, this is actually where we'd like to go, I guess. So um, just to demonstrate a few things so that you get a little bit of an uh, of, uh, impression of what's currently around, uh, there is a really neat